everyone, it's Stephanie Miller with IOIB Designs. Today I have a Dollar Tree Easter DIY for you using the tinsel decorations that you can find at Dollar Tree. Just wait till you see how cute these tinsel bunnies turn out to be once we transform them. To get started, you're going to need a tinsel bunny or any of the tinsel decorations that you can find at Dollar Tree. It doesn't necessarily have to be a bunny, but I'm all about the bunnies this year. Then you're gonna need some sort of batting. As you can see here, I'm actually using some snow cover, a snow cover blanket that was left over from Christmas. And then you're gonna need a fabric of your choice. I'm using a tan jersey type fabric that I found at Walmart, two yards for $2. And then you'll need scissors and a glue gun. To get started, I am taking off the facial decorations on the bunny. They're just paper decorations that are taped on top, so I'm just taking them off. Some people like to actually unwind and take off all of this tinsel off of the bunny and be left with the plain frame that it is made from. I found that step to be unnecessary for this particular project, so I'm leaving all of the tinsel on. I wanted to hide the fact that this bunny has a hard frame to it, so that's why I left the tinsel on, thinking it would help give a little more cushion. You're gonna take your batting or snow cover, whatever material you are using, you're going to take it and cut it a little bit larger than the frame of your tinsel decoration. Now, because I am using the snow cover, it is a little thinner than I would have liked, so I am doubling it up to cover the top of the bunny. And then I'm just using one layer on the bottom. You want enough of the batting so that you cannot see the frame of the bunny underneath the batting. Then you're going to sandwich your tinsel decoration in between the pieces of batting so that you have a piece on the bottom and a piece on top, or in my case, I have two pieces on top. Now, this project is pretty simple. All you're going to do is hot glue around the edge of the frame of your tinsel bunny or whichever tinsel decoration you chose. And you're gonna be gluing the batting down to each other. You're gonna to wanna to protect your workspace underneath. As you'll see here, I ended up putting a piece of parchment paper underneath because the hot glue was going through the batting and getting onto my craft table. So I would suggest something underneath so that it does not stick and you have hot glue all over your work surface. Now, I highly recommend that you have some sort of silicone finger savers for this project because otherwise you're gonna be burning the heck out of your fingers with the hot glue. They actually sell these now at Dollar Tree in a three pack and I'm telling you, trust me, you're gonna want them. So continue going all the way around your tinsel bunny gluing the bottom piece of batting to the top piece right along the edge of the frame of the tinsel decoration. Now, my two top layers of the snow covering that I was using, they didn't stick to each other, so I actually had to go over around a second time and glue the second layer of the snow cover to the top one. I hope I'm making sense there. You just want everything glued together, outlining the frame of your tinsel decoration. Once your batting is glued all the way around your bunny, then you're going to cut off the excess batting. You're gonna to wanna to leave a little bit of a border. I left about a half an inch of a border all the way around my bunny. So now with the fabric that I chose, I'm going to repeat the process, this time with the fabric. I did have to iron my fabric to get some of the wrinkles out before I started this step. So just like I did with the batting, I'm going to be gluing around the edge of the bunny and gluing the fabric pieces together. One piece on the bottom, one piece on the top. Once you've glued the fabric all the way around your bunny, you guessed it, you're going to cut it out again, leaving about a half an inch of a border all the way around. And here he is all cut out. Now, depending on the fabric that you use, you could possibly stop here but the fabric that I used is going to fray a lot because it is just a very light, thin material and it was fraying a lot as I was cutting it. So I don't want those pieces all over the place. So I found a nifty little trick where you take nail polish and you just lightly brush it all along the edge of the fabric and it helps prevent it from fraying any further. This is a little time consuming to get all the way around, but trust me, it's worth it. 
I tested it out after the nail polish dried and I kind of rubbed my finger back and forth to see if I could get it to fray and come apart and it didn't. So this little trick really works, especially for those of us like me that are allergic to sewing. <laughs> so if you're not allergic to sewing, you could give a little stitch around the edge or something else um, to help stop it from fraying. Or better yet, use a fabric that you're not even gonna have to do this step, such as fleece or some other material that just does not fray when it is cut. And by all means, if you like to sew, give a little sewing stitch around the edge <laughs> so that it does not fray. Now it's time to dress up your bunny however you would like. I purposely wanted mine very plain and simple, and all I'm doing is adding a burlap ribbon around his head. I got this ribbon at the Dollar Tree. It is really, really nice. So I just tied it around and made a little, really it just made a little knot and then it made it look like a bow and that was it. If you wanted, you could add a face to it. You could also add the little detail on the ears. Um, you could paint that on or add another piece of fabric on there um, to add like the little pink insert for the ears. But like I said, I wanted mine plain. I didn't want a face. I just wanted the shape and the outline of the bunny. What do you think? I think he is so cute and he's gonna look so good on my little accent chair in my living room. I did all the same steps with this other tinsel bunny. To change him up a little bit, I just gave him a little bow on one ear instead of going all the way around. And again, all I'm doing for the bow is simply tying a knot and then it actually looks like a bow, but it's not a real bow. If you want a fancier bow, go for it, but I really liked the simplicity of this. So what do you think? These are like two mock pillows because they're not to be used as pillows. They're just to look nice. If you don't wanna use them as pillows, that's fine. I'm sure you can find some place to set them in your home. It'll just add a little softness to your decor. And with the frames still in them, they'll sit up nicely wherever you choose to put them. This next DIY was inspired by this adorable little plant that I saw at Hobby Lobby. I had the exact same plant minus the bunny ears in my guest bathroom. So I knew I didn't need to buy this whole piece from Hobby Lobby. All I needed were some little ears to stick in it. And who doesn't have some little greenery or plants around their home that they could just dress up with some adorable bunny ears. For this project, I used the tinsel decoration that had two little bunny heads on it. Now, since I purchased this with the two bunny heads, I've seen them carry ones with three bunny heads on it. So you're getting even more of a deal because you can make more of these, but I have two, so I'll be making two different versions of these bunny ears. There's a little plastic ring that holds them together, so I cut that off. And then on these, I did remove all of the tinsel. The tinsel is just wound around on these little knobs that are on the plastic frame and it winds off really easily. It's not glued or anything. So you just unwind it until you're left with a plain plastic frame. You're gonna need something to cut apart the plastic frame. Regular scissors are probably not gonna work very well. I use planter shears that I got at Dollar Tree also, and they worked really well. So I'm cutting apart all of the plastic frame except for the bunny ears, and I was leaving the little center part of the frame that I was thinking I was going to stick into the planter. You will see later that there was a little oopsie and I ended up changing the design just a little bit. I also cut off the little knobs that were around the ears so I could get the ears as smooth as possible. They don't have to be perfect, you just don't want those little knobbies sticking out. So you're left with just the bunny ears and then that little center stick part to stick in your plant. Now I'm gonna take twine and I'm going to start wrapping it around the ears. This twine I got at Hobby Lobby for $3.49 for this entire roll of 
twine. You could use the twine from Dollar Tree, but it is a little bit thinner and you'd probably be wrapping a little bit more. So I wanted a thicker twine. I cut off a long piece of twine. I wasn't really sure how much I was going to need. So I just estimated because you're going to need to stick it in between the frame. You'll see what I mean by that in a minute. To start, I glued the corner of the twine to the corner of one of the ears and just started wrapping. Every once in a while, I would put a little dot of hot glue on the frame and glue the twine to the frame. And again, those silicone finger savers are gonna be your best friend for this project. Because the frame is one solid piece, I was just having to scrunch the ball of twine in the center of the ear before I could continue wrapping. Are you ready for my big oops? <laughs> Here it comes. So I got to the end of one of the ears and I realized there was part of the plastic frame that I wanted to cut off because I couldn't get the twine wrapped around right. So I clipped another little piece of the frame and it actually just broke the ears oh. apart. <laughs> That was not supposed to happen, and I sat and stared at it for a few minutes because I had no idea what I was going to do next. Not what I wanted to do. I tried gluing the two pieces back together. I tried E6000 hot glue. Nothing was working to secure it, so plan B came into place here. But that's okay because I actually think I like plan B better. So once I gave up on trying to get the ears glued back together the way I had originally planned, I just started working with the individual ears. I think this actually works better, so I would suggest just cut off just the ears of the frame and don't worry about that little center stick like I originally told you. So once I had both ears covered in twine, you can see here there's lots of little wispy pieces of twine on the ears. I wanna make them look really polished, so I took a lighter and very carefully, I just burned off the little wispy parts of the twine. Please be very, very careful with this part, and if there are any kiddos doing this project, please make sure you have an adult do this part. Look at the difference after you burn off the little wispy parts of the twine. It just has a very polished, professional look. Now to cover up the center part of the ears, I'm taking some scrap of paper that I already had and I'm just tracing the inside of the ears. And then I'm cutting out, but I'm leaving a little bit of a border because I need it a little bit larger than the center of the ears so that I can glue it on. Then I just took a plain piece of cardstock instead of using the fancy scrapbook paper for the backing. So I took a white piece of cardstock and I'm tracing those little cutouts so that I can cover up the back. Then I hot glued the pretty scrapbook paper on the front of the ear and on the back, since I needed another way to stick it into my plant, I got some skewers that I already had in my pantry and I glued one to the back and then covered it up with the plain cardstock that I cut out. Then I got my little plant that matched exactly like the one I saw at Hobby Lobby and I measured how far down I wanted the ears to go because I needed to cut a little bit of the skewer. Then you simply just stick each of the ears down in your plant and you are done. Look how cute that is. Now I forgot to press record for this next version, but all I did is take a microfiber cloth from Dollar Tree, I cut it out a little bit larger than the ear, wrapped it around the ear, and hot glued it all together. Then I took another skewer, glued it to the back, and covered it up with white cardstock. I used the little ear insert that was on the tinsel bunny as a pattern to cut out the little middle part of the ear out of burlap ribbon and then glued that on top. I absolutely love this one. This is my family's favorite too. So who would have thought you could make such cute things out of those tinsel decorations from Dollar Tree? Let me know in the comments below which of these projects is your favorite. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a big thumbs up. It really helps me get found in the YouTube world. If you enjoyed this tutorial, I would love it if you would consider subscribing to my channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my new videos. I can't wait to see you in my next video.